lifted up and away from the sterile gown and gloves. Do not hesitate because water may drip from the hands onto the sterile gown and gloves, which would contaminate them. Allow the towel to unfold so that the long edge hangs down between your two hands. Bend forward slightly at the waist so the sterile towel does not touch the scrub suit. Use one end of the towel for one hand and arm and the other end for the other hand and arm. Blot the skin, working from hand to wrist to arm without moving back over a previously dried area. Keep the towel out in front of you where you can see it. After drying one hand and arm with one end of the towel, begin drying the other hand by placing the wet hand at the other end of the towel while confining it to its own side. Dry the second hand and arm using the same blotting technique. When you're finished, drop the towel into a nearby receptacle. Proceed immediately to gowning. When gowning, consider the gown as having two surfaces. An inside surface that will contact the non-sterile scrub suit and bare skin of hands and arms, and an outside surface that will be considered sterile only from the waist to the axillary line and from the hands to the elbows. Surgical gowns are folded inside out before packaging. This allows scrubbed personnel to grasp the presenting surface of the gown with bare hands to put it on, because that surface will be the non-sterile side. Gowning should be performed according to the following guidelines. After drying the hands and arms, grasp the gown just below the neckline and lift it up and away from the table without touching anything else with bare hands. Remember, the inside surface of the gown faces outward. Step away from the table and allow the gown to unfold. Do not touch the outside surface facing away from you. Being careful not to lower the gown, look for the armholes and place your hands and arms inside the sleeves. Advance your hands, pushing them through horizontally from your shoulders, not above your head, to within about an inch of the knitted cuff edge. At this time, the circulator may secure the neck and inside ties and assist in securing the back wrap. Glove immediately using the closed technique. Many types of surgical gloves are commercially available. The common considerations in choosing gloves are the glove material, latex allergy is a major concern, tensile strength, thickness, and proper fit. Tactile sensation is important, especially in surgical specialties that require the use of fine instruments and in which delicate tissues are encountered. Double gloving is appropriate and highly recommended when there is repeated contact with heavy instruments or there is copious bleeding, such as during orthopedic surgery. The closed gloving technique is used by a person wearing a sterile gown. It is the most effective method to prevent contact between skin and the outside of the sterile glove. When learning the closed glove technique, think of the glove as having two surfaces or planes, the inside and the outside. Before the gloves are touched, the entire glove is sterile, inside and outside. As soon as gloving is initiated, however, the inside surface is considered non-sterile. The technique for gloving is among the most difficult skills for students to learn. One of the best ways is to have an experienced person glove while you are also gloving in practice sessions or dry run. To perform the closed gloving technique, do not allow your fingers to protrude outside the knitted cuff of the gown. You will maneuver sterile gloves onto your hands with your hands hidden from view under the gown's cuffs. The glove wrapper is folded so that the side edges come together at the middle. The gloves are oriented in the wrapper with the fingers up and the cuffed wrist part at the bottom edge of the wrapper. The upper and lower edges of the wrapper are folded inward. To open the wrapper, grasp the two center edges and open them outward to expose the gloves. To keep the edges from closing up again, invert them slightly. This will remove some of the memory in the folds. Position the left hand with the palm facing upward as if you are about to receive an object in your hand. Pick up the glove with your right hand shielded by the gown and place the glove palm to palm and cuff to cuff over the left hand. 
The glove is oriented correctly if the fingers point to your wrist. Working inside the gown cuff, grasp the under edge of the glove cuff between your left thumb and fingers. Using your protected right hand, grasp the upper edge of the glove cuff. The palm of the glove should still be oriented to your palm. If it is not, you will have difficulty sliding the hand into the glove, a common problem at this point. To correct misalignment of the glove, grasp it at the cuff and realign it correctly, palm to palm. Keep the hidden fingers within an inch of the outside edge of the knitted cuff and make sure your thumb is well inside the seam of the cuff. This prevents another common obstacle which occurs when the left hand slips back into the gown sleeve. Pull the glove on. Grasp the left glove cuff and advance your left hand into the glove. Repeat with the other hand. After gloving, check both hands for any sign of punctures or tears. The open gloving technique is used during sterile procedures that do not require a sterile gown, such as preoperative skin preparation of the patient and assisting in minor skin procedures and catheterization. The hands are not usually scrubbed before open gloving, although they should always be clean. To perform the open gloving technique, open the outer non-sterile wrapper and deliver the inner sterile wrapped gloves onto a clean, dry surface. Grasp the edges of the glove wrapper with bare hands and expose the gloves. Before releasing the glove wrapper, ensure that it will stay open. The palms of the gloves should be facing upward, thumbs to the outside. Using your left hand, grasp the upper folded lip of the right glove cuff. Do not touch the wrapper underneath or outside of the glove. Pick up the glove and slide your right hand into the glove, keeping your hand palm up, oriented to the palm of the glove. Leave the cuff turned down until you glove the other hand. To glove the left hand, slide the fingers of your sterile gloved hand under the cuff. This positions your gloved hand, sterile, in contact with the outside, sterile surface of the other glove. Keep the palm up as you slide your bare hand into the glove. You may unroll the cuff carefully, but do not allow the gloved hand to touch any bare skin. If a gloved hand accidentally becomes contaminated, the glove is removed by the circulator and the surgical technologist replaces the glove using open glove technique. Gowning and gloving of other team members happens after the surgical technologist has set up sterile supplies and instruments and the other members of the surgical team enter from the scrub sink area. During gowning and gloving, the surgeon greets the scrub, circulator, and anesthesiologist and may introduce other members of the team. This time allows formal acknowledgement of the team members and what is to be done before the actual start of surgery. The surgeon also may clarify the need for special instruments or equipment at this time. Interaction among team members during the process of gowning and gloving often sets the tone for the entire surgery. When the sterile team members enter the operating room, the scrub hands a towel to the lead surgeon and then to the other members of the team. Good Hi. morning, Melissa. How are you? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Got good sleep last night. Good. And I am raring to go. Use the following technique to gown and glove other team members. When the team member reaches out for a towel for drying, pass the sterile towel over the team member's extended hand so that the long edge of the towel falls between his or her two hands. Grasp the folded gown, step away from any non-sterile surface, and allow the gown to unfold. Cuff your hands under the shoulders of the gown so that the outside of the gown, the part of the gown that will remain sterile, faces you. 
Position the gown so that the person you are gowning can easily insert his or her hands into the armholes. After the team member has stepped forward and placed his or her arms into the sleeves, pull the gown over the elbows toward the shoulders and then step back and away and grasp the gloves. Glove the team member by opening the glove wrapper and place gloves and wrapper near you on a sterile table. Grasp the glove under the cuff and spread the opening with your thumbs held away from the glove or tucked securely under the cuff. Orient the glove so that the palm of the glove faces the person you are gloving. Offer the right glove first, then the left. Make sure the sterile team member inserts his or her hand into the glove by pointing all fingers downward. Allow the cuff edge to recoil gently. Repeat the process with the other glove. The circulator secures the neck closure and ties located on the inside or non-sterile surface of the gown. After the team member is gloved, grasp one of the sterile outside ties of the gown while the surgeon turns toward the wrap that encircles the front of the gown. Hand the tie to the wearer to be secured in front. When removing sterile attire, always remove the gown first and then the gloves. Grasp the gown slightly below the shoulders, releasing or breaking the ties or snaps, and pull the sleeves downward. This will roll the gown inside out as it slides over your gloved hands. Roll the gown so the contaminated outside surface faces inward. Dispose of the gown in a biohazard bag. The gloves should be removed after the gown. Grasp one glove at the outer wrist using the opposite gloved hand, glove to glove. Pull the glove off. It will turn inside out as you remove it. Place your bare fingers inside the cuff of the opposite hand and roll this glove off your hand, skin to skin. Dispose of both gloves in a biohazard receptacle without touching the contaminated outside of the gloves.